I'd like to welcome you here tonight. We're just a couple of minutes away from beginning the meeting. Before we begin, I'd like to invite you to stand, join me in the pledge, and then I'll lead the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity uh, to live in this great city. I thank you. Lord, for each of these servants up here and for each of our residents who have come tonight and those that may be watching. God, we just ask that you guide us as we make decisions that are best for, uh, for our city and the people that live here. And we trust you for that guidance now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> All right. I'd like to welcome you again to the regular meeting of... Springdale City Council. This is Tuesday, June 12th, 2018. We do have large print agendas available. Wyman's holding them up there if that would be uh, helpful to anyone. And with that said, I'm going to call the meeting to order and ask our city clerk to call the roll. Mayor Sprouse? Here. Rick Culver? Here. Jeff Watson? Here. Mike Overton? Here. Colby Fulfer? Mike Lawson? Here. Rick Evans? Here. Jim Reed? Here. Kathy J. Cox? Here. Ernest Kay? I'm here. All right, thank you. This is the, uh, we're at item four. If you're following along, this is the part of the meeting that the council sets aside at each regular meeting in order to hear comments from our citizens. If there is anyone that would like to uh, address the council tonight, we ask that you come to the microphone, clearly state your name and address, and please understand that uh, the council won't be acting on anything you have to say tonight. Um, so if there's anyone that would like to address the council concerning an item that is not already on tonight's agenda, you're welcome to come at this time. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to item five, the approval of minutes. Uh, council, you've had opportunity to look over these minutes. If there are no changes or additions, I'd entertain a motion to approve them as presented. If none, so moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Item six, procedural motions. What's your pleasure, Council? Move for A and B. Second. We've got a motion and a second for both 6A and B. Uh, roll call, please. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Carries 8 0. Mayor? Yes. <clears throat> I would like to uh, suggest that uh, we change the uh, order of items on the agenda and move item number nine up uh, in front of item seven, since there are a number of people here All right. that would be interested in uh, doing okay. that. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion to second to move item nine up to, uh, it'd be our next item then. Okay, <clears throat> motion to second. Uh, roll call, please. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. There's eight zero. Okay, this was uh, discussed in finance committee, uh, reports and recommendations. Chairman uh, and, and Jeff was there to chair that meeting. Jeff, do you have anything to say first before we, uh, I, I'm asking that this item get tabled tonight. May I make a comment after mm -hmm. Mr. Sure. Watson? Go ahead. Sure. Um, well, first, first thing I'd like to say is on the agenda that where it uh, states the resolution you know what the resolution is it says the co committee recommended approval that's not really accurate um, and some of y'all were here at the committee meeting uh, last Monday evening and and there was a lot of discussion but uh, there was no recommendation for approval of e of any site right. for the animal shelter it that's was just correct. it was just recommended by the committee to forward the resolution to the council tonight. And uh, since that time, uh, Mayor, you had uh, apparently come up with a, another possible option and there, and uh, it's my understanding that you were going to request that, uh, that this resolution be uh, tabled tonight to give us the opportunity to uh, consider that option. That's right. And, and so, um, problem I have and actually I'm for the t tabling once we get to that point but for any of the people that are here tonight that were also here at the committee meeting uh, if we do end up tabling the resolution for tonight 
I want to apologize because I was very, um, I was very, uh, not, I don't want to say strict, but uh, I tried to keep that discussion at the committee meeting uh, limited to um, questions about the <coughs> two different sites and tried to restrict opinions and kept telling the audience that they'd have the opportunity tonight to come and give their opinion as to their desires or wishes or opinions for one side or the other and and it appears that if uh, we table tonight we won't have that discussion tonight it'll be on another night and, and probably we'll have another committee meeting to consider the third option before we actually come back to the council right. and and My have a full discussion from the audience yeah and, and and there's no guarantee on this because we're we're having the site evaluated by our architects so we don't know for sure and won't know how <clears throat> feasible that site is until uh, until we we get the information back from them the goal is to have that back in time for next week's next Monday's committee meeting and then if that's the case if you all want to do the same thing in two weeks at council that you were planning to do tonight and that is discuss the location then uh, my hope is uh, that we'll have a have a third option and I believe it's a very good option it's uh, it's no secret it is uh, it's 12.33 I think acres uh, just west of Central Junior High School on Huntsville Avenue and uh, I think it's an excellent site but again we don't have all our answers yet and all the information we would need and, and we certainly wouldn't want to make that decision tonight anyway because everyone has a, has deserves an opportunity to weigh in on that side as well Mike yeah mayor we've had you know several discussions on this and a lot of people have been involved and we came up as you mentioned we came up now we have a third site and uh, your recommendation is that we table this uh, resolution and my motion would be that we table this resolution with the understanding that we're withdrawing the J.B. Hunt Park as consideration for a site for the animal shelter. I, I, that's my I would. I would, certainly, I would certainly support that. I'll second that. I'll second that also. <clears throat> All right, so if this passes and our discussion next Monday will be hopefully two sides. Two sides. <laughs> And through this conversation, if there's if there are other people listening out there, which is exactly what's driving this forward right now, and somebody else has another site, it's an opportunity. I think they should definitely contact the mayor or any member of the city council, because this has been a heated discussion that didn't have to take place this way. We all want to protect everybody's property. We want the best for the animal shelter. We want the best for our city. So if there is another option out there, other than J.B. Hunt, or now, if that's off the table, McCullough or the Central Junior High, then please don't hesitate to contact the city. And I, I, I appreciate the motion and the reason I support it, and we've got it is because <laughs> we have people who have been to every meeting since this discussion began, and and we have an opportunity to at least cut them loose. The only, if, the only problem with the yeah. only problem with that, Mayor. <laughs> You know, I'd like to cut you loose too, but I'm a stickler for detail. The only problem I have with that is that you put out a, um, a public notice that you were going to request that this item be tabled tonight. So there is a possibility, I don't know if it's true or not, but there's a possibility that there could have been people that wanted to come tonight to argue for J.B. Hunt, but because That's true. You suggested that it was going to be tabled they may not have come uh, and and now they would not have an opportunity to discuss that that's a fair point I would, I would like to also say that if we do this I, I I don't know that it would be I don't know appropriate to just bring those two options to the council again um, after we've had public input session uh, we spent a lot of time on that and then than to make a decision on these two properties without having another public input session uh, and giving everyone the same opportunity to discuss it as we have with the J.B. Hunt location. I, I just, I feel like this 
to be fair, would take a considerable amount of time to go back and redo uh, all the conversations we've already had on this. I would say if we're going to do that, that we need to open it back up to another public discussion, um, it, just to give everyone the same opportunity in case they have opposition to Which that location. Which is the point Ms. Jaycox was making, I think. But I'm also going to make the point that I had several calls. People know that I was part of the discussion in the beginning. I was part of Shelters Across America and the assessment that we did then for the property regarding the shelter. Many people called me after they heard this was going to be tabled and said, do they need to come tonight if they were in support of J.B. Hunt? And I said, no, that's not important tonight because we'll table it. It will remain part of the discussion. So for those of you that would like it off the table, I can't support that only because of the promises that I made to others in this city. I would do the same for each and every one of you. I also have a question to ask on this. Um, in order, I think, for us to make a decision to table this, we might want to consider some of the information that we have uh, about this property, just so everybody knows why we're wanting to table it, what the other opportunity is, um, maybe if we know what the property is going to cost, where the extra money will come from, those kind of details so that we can make an informed decision if we want to table the, the decision. I will tell you that uh, uh, we were we were looking at possibly are looking at possibly an additional half million dollars or more to develop the Ford Avenue site. This property has been offered to the cost of the city this 12 acres at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now, obviously, it would have to appraise, and all those issues would would have to to flesh out. But uh, the difference in this property is that it's 12 acres. The back third of this property will be bisected by the Pride of Springdale Trail, which is the future trail that will, uh, will connect uh, Springdale High School and the, and the Greenway, actually, to uh, Harbor High School. There's a, uh, that could develop uh, a park area uh, behind the new animal shelter. The animal shelter would be closer, if, if it'll lay out right, would be closer to, to Huntsville. And that would, allow an op that would allow an opportunity for out of the animal shelter bond just to purchase the amount of property needed for the shelter and out of the uh, parks bond to purchase the remainder of the property. Uh, we, we could possibly get out of this with, with little or very, at least very little additional money out of CIP looking at the uh, uh, looking at the uh, uh, Ford Avenue site there's a real very real possibility that we could we could be looking at significant money out of CIP so I believe this is very doable if all those things work out and those are big ifs but uh, but in, in answer to your question Colby and how how would we do this and, and some of those other uh, particulars I that's that's the way I would hope this would go. But we don't have those answers, uh, uh, but we'll have a better idea of those answers, uh, hopefully by next week. The, the so. parks money that would be used, you're saying out of the, the parks bond money? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, keep in mind also, we've got, I think it's a 10% contingency on the estimates for the animal shelter. That's half a million dollars. So if we can if we can hang on to that contingency and not uh, and be very very frugal with it, then we could well come out of this uh, without spending a lot more money. But but the goal, as as I mentioned at the committee, and I know as Kathy and and others have have said, the the goal is is to 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 not have to reduce the building. What, what our needs are in, uh, as a result of having to pay for property or pay for additional site work. And, um, and I think, that's, I think that's, a, that's very important because we're talking about a facility that's going to serve us for many, many, many years. So location is important, but also building the right thing is important. And, um, and we have, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not bashful at all about saying that that I'm very excited about this site if the reports come back from the architect that this is a good buildable site. 
this is this is the most centrally located site we've been able to to uh, consider. Uh, it's got tremendous access with Huntsville Avenue. It's very very visible, and uh, and in the future it could very easily be connected to a park and a trail, which was our goal in the first place, or two of, two of our goals in the first place. So um, well, and to your point, Mayor, it also is right next to where there are a lot of kids, a lot of people, right. a lot of visibility. So if the site works out, I think it would be a fabulous opportunity. There are just too many unanswered questions right now. But it's it's nice to have a, another option available for right. the city to consider. Okay, we've got a motion right on the table, including the. No, oh, I would think okay. that uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I would think that we could, uh, if it gets tabled, that we would bring it up at. Uh, the council uh, committee meeting on the uh, hopefully next week 15th yep yeah and then we can decide on the 15th whether to forward it to the next council or not it's the 18th it's anyway it's next Monday yeah the 18th I'm sorry yeah the 18th right I, I just I'll, I'll say this for the record this the property is located next to my business and I, I don't have any issue being close in proximity my main concern is that this this could draw on again having another public comment section and redoing everything we've done and i think we've seen even with the huntsville uh, project uh, from 71 to uh, i-49 that uh, i think we're we're doing a great job with securing bids by moving yep. forward and I, I my person personal opinion is we have a viable option I, i'd like to see us move forward with it um, but I'm also okay with everyone else uh, voting to discuss this at the next committee meeting. But I just wanted to say Well, and, and Colby, you've been real good to remind us all along, and, and we're going to see a great example of this in, this in the project you mentioned, the, 40, the Huntsville overlay, that we're in a very favorable bid climate. So we certainly, if, <clears throat> if we go down the direction of, uh, of the Huntsville site for the animal shelter, we certainly want to give everyone an opportunity to weigh in on that, but we, in my opinion, we can't stretch it out the way we have trying to decide between these two sides. Um, we need to make a decision and get this thing designed so we can get it bid and built. But, uh, but we'll, we'll give every opportunity we can for public comment uh, depending on what happens next Monday and how you all want to move this forward. So the motion on the table now and a second is is to uh, uh, table this and as a part of that motion to remove the consideration of JB Hunt Park as a site as an option for the animal yes. shelter and please consider all of those people. how long are we are we tabling it for now until let's table it in for two just weeks or do you want until, the committee, until the committee forwards it yep okay so so if the committee does not make a, is not ready to make a decision next Monday then it might be after that yep <clears throat> okay please consider the folks that were told not to come tonight to comment to this council okay uh, roll call Reed yes Daycocks? No. Culver? Yes. Watson? Well, only because, as you said, Mayor, that we want to take pub all public comment, and by voting for this, we're pr prohibiting people, potentially prohibiting people from, from commenting on J.B. Hunt Park. So I'm going to have to vote no. Overton? Yes. Culver? No. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Carries five three. Okay. We will be back at this Monday night, hopefully, with more information on the uh, on the new site. Okay. Uh, ready to move to item. Seven. Yeah, it's tabled, so we're we're ready to move to uh, so item Mayor, seven. If I'm not mistaken, would you tell them that JB Hunt's off the table? <coughs> Council just voted uh, five three. Council just voted 5-3 to take J.B. Hunt Park out of consideration. Okay? And hopefully, you're all still going to be very interested in where this animal shelter goes, and you're going to be great supporters of all the great work our animal shelter does. Can I, can I so, clarify uh, something yeah, on that? Yeah, go ahead. It, it wasn't necessarily just 5-3.
um, to take J.B. Hunt off. It was also the tabling side of it because I, I don't want J.B. Hunt to be the location for it, but I voted no because I don't want to table. I just want to move forward right. with the other one. And just I'll remind you sure. one more time of the many people that were told that could come not come tonight because it was going to be tabled, and they were supportive of J.B. Hunt. Not that that is something that, anyway. I hope Just please understand. I hope the new site comes forward and they'll be, great, they'll be great supporters of that, I hope. Okay. <clears throat> Are we ready to move to item seven? Correct? Yes. Okay. Sir. Keep me in order here. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to turn that over to Ernest. This is a resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk of the city of Springdale to accept a quick claim of land from the Bentonville Bella Vista Trailblazers Association, Inc., DBA, WA Trailblazers. This is the property, the uh, Fitzgerald Station property. I think you all knew this was coming. This would be the uh, legal mechanism for the city to accept this land. Move the resolution pass. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, great gift to the city here. And exciting things that are gonna be happening out, or, out in that area. Um, anyone in the audience? Okay, Denise. Jay Cox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Pulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Here's 8 0. Item 8 <coughs> is uh, Patsy. She's coming for that. The good news is with the uh, appropriation bill for the CDBG program, we gained $28,425 in the city being cut. So this proposed say that, program- Say that again, I'm sorry. $28,425 additional. Right. And we had anticipated we were gonna be cut, but there were some cities in the state that were cut. We yeah. were fortunate enough to have an increasing amount. I so think we the, were one of just a handful or less right. of cities in Arkansas that actually saw increases. Right. Yeah. And so this resolution is a resolution authorizing, a, a resolution adopting and approving the 2018 to 2022 consolidated plan and the 2018 program year action plan for the community development block grant allows the mayor to sign the documents and submit it to HUD. Uh, this would put in $25,000 for general program administration, which is 2.9% would put in $759,425 into the housing services program, which is the housing rehab, the lead-based pa lead paint and that, and then put $85,000 into the public services activities that you all selected at committee meeting, all of them being funded and put us at 9.8% for a total of $869,425. Patsy, was the, the, we put the extra into the housing Yes, we, we put the extra great. twenty-eight where, thousand into housing. That's what we, we didn't try it. Yeah, we left yeah. all of the amounts that you had established for the public but services. That's the original intent of, of the right. program, anyways, for the housing. That's great. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Move the resolution pass. Second. Did we read it? I'm sorry. <clears throat> yes, I did. Yes, okay, I thank I'm you. sorry. I thought you okay. did. Okay. <laughs> Good deal. All right. Uh, anyone else need to comment on this? Okay, Denise. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Fulfer. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Reed. Yes. Jay Cox. Here's eight zero. All right. Uh, we're at ten. So Patsy, you you ready to roll on? I'm ready to roll. Okay. So the first item is the rezoning ordinance for the property in which you overturn the planning commission's decision to rezone the property from A1 to SF2. The title of the ordinance reads an ordinance amending ordinance number 3307, the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springdale, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto by rezoning certain lands from agricultural district A1 to low medium density single family residential district SF2, and declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Other comments or questions? Anyone in the audience on this one? Okay, Denise. Watson. Yes. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Heard the emergency clause pass. Second. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 8 0. It had an emergency clause because we have a pending subdivision preliminary plat proposal for it. The next two items are to address uh, food trucks coming into the downtown area. Our form-based code at this time doesn't directly address the issue of food trucks, 
So we're still handling those in the same manner we do in other areas in that they have to apply for a conditional use request, but we look at them and how they fit into the form-based code. In the near future, we hope to have that section prepared to bring to you for a minute. We're just not there yet. So the first one is for a uh, food truck to be located behind 101 East Emma Avenue. Planning Commission reviewed the uh, conditional use request and recommends the approval with the following conditions. Uh, may not operate between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. The health certificate is required to display the health certificate in a manner visible to customers. No obstruction of pedestrian or motor vehicle traffic club flow. No obstruction of traffic signals or regulatory signs. No vending upon a public way. No sound device that produces a loud and raucous noise in violation of city ordinance or violate any other city ordinance in connection with the vending operation. Sites to remain clean and free of paper or refuge of any kind generated from the operation of the business with all trash or debris accumulating within 20 feet of any vending stand to be collected and deposited into trash containers and meet fire code requirements. The title of the resolution re reads, A Resolution Proving a Conditional Use for Daryl Cousins at 101 East Emma Avenue as set forth in Ordinance Number 4030. Move to pass. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Wolfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes, and Mayor, this is directly <clears throat> behind the old Ellis ice cream parlor for your information. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that parlor. <laughs> is, is that in the trivia cards? Did anybody want to see if that's in there? All right. Anybody else you need to vote? <laughs> it was the last. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. All right, Patsy. Okay, the next item is for a food truck to be located at 101 West Johnson Avenue for Foghorns. A planning Commission, again, reviewed this one, recommends approval with the same following conditions. May not operate between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. If a health certificate is required, display the health certificate in a manner visible to customers. No obstruction of pedestrian or motor vehicle traffic flow. No obstruction of traffic signals or regulatory signs. No vending upon a public way. No sound devices that produces a loud and raucous noise in violation of city ordinance or violate any other city ordinance in connection with the vending operation. Sites to remain clean and free of paper or refuse of any kind generated from the operation of the business with all trash or debris accumulating within 20 feet of any vending stand to be collected and deposited into trash containers, meet fire code requirements. Title of the, or, of the resolution reads, a resolution proving a conditional use for foghorns at 101 West Johnson Avenue is set forth in ordinance number 4030. Would the resolution pass? Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Rick, you're gonna have to get quicker. You, you've, been, <clears throat> you've been a half second behind on the last two seconds. They were already <laughs> <laughs> foghorns has truck. been there. This foghorns is, has been there for some time. Uh, but they are in getting their conditional use so they can remain there permanently. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Yeah, I was waiting for the trivia. Carries 8 0. Well, <laughs> that used to be an uh, old home site there, but that's next to it was one of the railroad employees that lived there but don't worry about it. okay <laughs> wow and he's going to question that right That's it. the next item is a resolution approving a waiver of subdivision regulations in its streets uh, and sidewalks and drainage improvements in connection with the preliminary plat for the o oasis subdivision on 56th street uh, the 56th street project is proposed to be included as part of the uh, bond program, the 2018 bond program. Planning Commission is recommending that this be approved subject to the needed improvements being included in the 2018 bond program. I don't think right now there's any action has been taken to, to set that one into action yet, but it is part of what is anticipated to be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, this council, this, would, this property would be included if we're able to improve 56th or Gene George north from uh, Elm Springs Road to County Line. Right. This would be included in that, and I'm, I'm hoping we're gonna be able to do that. So I know that we, we in our discussions, everyone seemed to agree that that was an important uh, extension if we, can, if we can fit it in. And if not, they'll do it 
Mm -hmm. They'll come back and do it. If not, or how will that work? Not, we'll have to address it. Right. Well, we, we need to address it by the before the final plaque comes forward. If this is not part of what can be concluded in, in the bond program, either they'll have to come back and ask for another waiver, or they'll have to do the improvements. They'll have to go back to planning commission first. Well, they have to come back to you guys because you're the ones that commit the money. Okay. Okay. As to whether or not it would be waived entirely, or they would be required to make the improvements. So hopefully, by the time that happens, we'll right. we'll have a better idea of whether or not we're going to be doing that portion of fifty-six. Well, they seem to think they're going to have the final plat ready in a hundred, hundred and twenty days. That's really pushing it. That would, you know. Well, if we can so. get these projects designed and bid, I'm pretty sure we're and get these things going. I I, I think we're going to have plenty of room in the bond issue to do that section of fifty-six. Yeah. No, I'm not sure I understood the answer to Rick's question. If we waive this tonight, the improvements for 56th Street, and then 56th Street is not improved under the bond program, it's already waived. Well, this, because it says now they're in the now therefore that it is subject to the needed improvements being included right. in the 2018 bond program. So if they're not if it's included. Not there, then they either yeah, have to, to do the improvements or they have to come back to you guys for and you have to decide whether or not to grant yes. the waiver or not. Isn't that part of the, uh, is there a grant that we're going for that might take some time? We'll find out about that, I think. Brad, do we, we know the date <coughs> on the on the Tiger grant? Hmm? December 18th. November. December 18th. Okay. December, okay. Um, but I, I, that would, that grant would actually carry us further north. So past uh, county line. Past county line. Depending on how we route that. It, it it would be to create a connection to Wagon Wheel or to the Wagon Wheel interchange. Is that right? Is that how we worded it? So uh, I, I think I'm 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 very I'm very optimistic that we should be able to depending on what other projects y'all want to bring forward, that we should be able to do that. But this gives us a little a little time until the until the plat's right. ready. Uh, so let's see where we're at then, because so this is conditional on uh, on that. That's bond. the condition that's yeah. put in this resolution for right. this project. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Denise. We don't have a oh, we don't have a motion. Well, then we can't vote. We'll move the resolution to be adopted. <laughs> second. All right. Opposite. Motion second. Now, no other comments. Go ahead, Denise. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Reed. Yes. Jay Cox. Yes. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Fulfer. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Carries eight zero. Okay, the next one is the a similar situation asking for a waiver of street improvements in connection with Ramsey subdivision, which is on Ball Street. And the Planning Commission didn't set the same stipulation because at the time we talked about it, Planning Commission, we weren't exactly sure because part of this road is in Elm Springs. The other side of the street is part could be part of the parks project. This is a small portion of that. So they were recommending a, a waiver if it could be included, but we didn't put that stipulation on this because we weren't exactly sure. Mayor and I talked about it some this morning. It's a little bit more up in the air than the other one was. It, it, not that we're doing improvements, but how those improvements, the scope of those improvements is right. still up in the air. Right. Since um, uh, the way I think this is going to shake out is that, that we're going to do the road improvements that on the property that borders, the roads that border our new park, and uh, we'll do both sides curb and gutter, but we might, we probably w wouldn't do sidewalks on the Elm Springs side. <clears throat> they can do that if they, if they would like to, but we probably wouldn't. But this is in Springdale for a short distance. Mm -hmm. no. On the the full side. length on Ball Road is in Springdale. Mike, can you go the, to the next the park, uh, to the next slide? The, the park is. Or the, I know. The, I'm talking the, about this subdivision. This subdivision's in Springdale. Yes. The property just to the north of it in, is Elm Springs, and is, the next piece is Elm Springs. The east side of the road is would, all in Springdale. Would a bill of assurance be appropriate for sidewalks? Well, we wouldn't. We wouldn't improve the west side of the road if. If that's Springdale, this subdivision. We're going if to we're, just because we're doing the park on the east. Why would we be improving the west side? We can't. We uh, practically, Jeff, with the drainage work that needs to be done out there, there's no way to improve half the road. Okay. We're going to have to do the whole road, but we're going to take the right of way off the Springdale side. So we're not we're not going to be in a situation buying right of way from 
the, from Elm Springs the residents. Count city, right. yeah. okay. The same will be true on <coughs> West County line. Uh, we'll do the north. We'll move the road to the north uh, as much as possible, uh, as far as improvements and any widening we do. Brian's suggestion is we do it the same way we did the other one, that it makes it subject to being included in the bond program. If it's not, then they'd have to come back and do the improvements and go back and we can change. Excellent. That's excellent we can, idea. We can change that the language the of it to be the same as sure the one previously. Yeah. And then that gives us time to work that out. If it's not worked out by final plat time, they'll come back and address it. Yeah, well, that's what it already says. Or, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it says denies a waiver. What we would do would be okay. the same language as on the previous uh, that says it. Uh, subject to the needed improvements being included in the 2018 bond program. We'd use the same language on that one, so option one. It's option one with that additional language, yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion to that effect? Move the resolution passed with those options, with that option. Second. A motion and a second. Any further comments or questions? Hey, Denise. Reed. Yes. Jay Cox. Yes. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Fulfer. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Carries 8 0. <clears throat> All right. Street and Capital Improvement Committee reports and recommendations by Chairman Rick Evans. Rick? We mean last week, Street and South B. We've got several items on the agenda tonight, and all of them are brought with a mechanism for approval. The first one is an ordinance to waive competitive bidding for the repair of Lake Springdale Trailhead and for other purposes. Move the ordinance pass. Second. Did we get a second? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't I'm hear. Sorry. Any yeah. other comments or questions? Real quick, so they know that the yeah, reason like, we're waiving uh, it is because we have a. This is repairing the flood damage to the parking area. We have a company in town already doing right. trails, and uh, got a really what we believe Nine. is a really yeah. good uh, uh, bid on on this one and and uh, and the next one you're going to hear too. That's why there's an emergency clause too. Right, so they can get going on that. Will some of this be refunded with FEMA mo money, or does this cover any of this? FEMA money, we, uh, they did write this as a project, and we should get reimbursement uh, for this for this project as much as they'll <clears throat> as wow. much as they allow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank All you. All right. Okay, Denise. Jaycox. Yes. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Fulfer. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Reed. Yes. Move the emergency clause pass. Second. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Fulfer. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Reed. Yes. Jaycox. Yes. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry eight zero. Next, we have an ordinance to waive <coughs> repair the meeting for the repair of Sanders Avenue trailhead and for other purposes. Move the ordinance pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. The difference, uh, of course, this is the Sanders Avenue trailhead, also the same flood. The difference is that this, and Ernest can speak to this if he needs to, but um, this will not be subject to FEMA reimbursement because at the time of the flood, it was, it was not public property. It was still in the hands of the contractor. So we're going to have to flesh that out with the insurance, the contractor, the contractor's insurance, and... Uh, but we need to get it fixed. We, so. we had we had withheld more than this cost of repairing it. We had withheld more than this amount from the previous contractor due to liquidated damages and retainage. But we are going to proceed uh, pursue those other avenues as well. Right. I think also we mentioned at the committee meeting just for everyone's benefit that we we haven't really had that much success in trying uh, people bidding on these types of projects because they're not. I mean that's why we're I think. We said we were considering waiving the competitive bidding on these. Right. Okay. Anyone? Good deal. I Please. have a question. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. Uh, how how do these numbers work? It's a hundred in section one. It's one hundred fourteen thousand four hundred thirty nine, and then appropriated one hundred twenty one four thirty nine. Um. Does that does that larger number does that reflect the ten percent up to ten percent contingency? 10%. Okay, I'm gonna have to get there. Same and look thing at that it. last one we did too. It was a, it was different there too. I didn't catch it then. Um, I know. Let me look. Appropriated one. Hmm. 
Wyman, I'm going to need your help on this one. If you have this in front of you. The numbers they gave me were a little bit confusing. They had two different contingencies in there for it. We can change the section three to be the same number as section one if you'd like. If you look on the second page behind it, they've actually got a $114,000 proposal, but then they've got a $3,000 contingency for gutter that they don't know if they're going to use. And then they've got an electric allowance, a plumbing allowance, some materials testing. So not all of that's going to be paid to the contractor. So they need more money appropriated than what the contractor is going to be charging. Those so are subcontractor allowances over and above their contracts, what they're saying. Right. Okay. So you're appropriating the 121 439. <clears throat> yeah. Right. If you approve this. And we did get a second. Is any other questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Watson. I sure think that's an odd way of doing it, but I'll go along with it. Yes. That's a yes. Overton. Yes. Yes. Watson. Yes, ma'am. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Reed. Yes. Jay Cox. Yes. Culver. Yes. For the emergency clause pass. <coughs> Overton. Yes. Colfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Both the ordinance emergency calls carry 8 0. Okay. Thank you, Wyman. Rick? Next, we have an ordinance to waive competitive bidding and appropriating capital improvement fund for LED lighting at the Springdale Municipal Airport. This is one we talked about before. We came back and got some bids, and it came in a lot better. Uh, basically, what we'll spend, we'll get back in no time, according to the savings. Move the ordinance pass. Second. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Further comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Wolfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jacob? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. As emergency clause. Move the emergency clause pass. Second. Watson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Culver? Yes. Both the ordinance emergency clause carry 8 0. <coughs> Next, we have a resolution appropriating capital prima funds for the repair of the roof of the Springdale Public Library, and this is basically to cover the uh, part that the insurance doesn't cover. Resolution pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Jay Cox. Yes. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Pulfer. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Carries 8 0. Okay, next we have a resolution authorizing the execution of a contract for Huntsville Avenue, and this is for the out of the, out of the bond program for the resurface of. Uh, from the bypass all the way to, I guess, is to any one business. Even a lot better than what we thought it would. Move the resolution pass. Second. This is the one we were talking about earlier that came in with such a great bid. Right. I yeah. think Paid also the engineering department had a, a pretty good role in, in saving us money on this, this project, too. So kudos to engineering department. Appreciate that. If you're going to compliment him, speak louder so he hears it. Thanks, Colby. Everybody's <laughs> that hard of hearing. Right? That's a good deal. All right. Any other questions or comments? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Reed. Yes. Jay Cox. Yes. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Fulfer. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Evans. Yes, ma'am. There's eight zero. 
Okay, next we have a resolution authorizing the execution of an engineering service contract for street and drainage improvement to 40th Street and for other purposes as part of the bond program. McClellan Engineering was uh, basically the consulting firm is going to do it. And this is from on 40th Street from Falcon Road to the bridge over Spring Creek. Resolution passed. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Jay Cox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Carries 8 0. Great. All right. Go ahead, Rick. I think you got one more. One more. It's a resolution authorizing the excuse of a contract change order for milestone. This is part of the uh, damage from the storm just north of, of uh, Huntsville Avenue off of Mill Street. Uh, Kane didn't make it. Fixing things that need to be fixed first time around wasn't right. All right. Resolution passed. Second. Let me, uh, Jim, I'm going to ask you to amend your resolution. Okay. Um, the, uh, uh, if you look at the, at the resolution, we've got the wrong amount in the third whereas. Um, that number got pulled in from the contract we just approved on Huntsville. Um, that number, sh that number should be thirty thousand five thirty six thirty. It's right in the last paragraph. Wow, we were. I'm sure really the contractor would prefer this number yeah. there. Well, it's the wrong contractor too. <laughs> uh, so uh, it'll be milestone construction for thirty thousand five thirty six thirty. You amend, amend my my motion to reflect the right amount. And second, still good. Yes. All right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Denise? Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Cox? Yes. 8 0. All right. Thank you, Rick. Um, Parks and Rec Committee reports and recommendations. Chairman Mike Lawson. Mike? Thank you, Mayor. We had a meeting last week. We've got uh, one item before you tonight. It was recommended for approval. Uh, resolution authorizing the execution of a construction manager contract for Shaw Family Park. Move the resolution pass. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Anyone? Okay, Denise. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Item 13, Police and Fire Committee Report and Recommendations, Chairman Rick Culver. Rick? I was not there that night. I'm not sure who might have took that for me. Jim did, I, I think. Mean, I believe I took it. Okay, uh, Jim, you want to take it? The first one is a resolution accepting and guaranteeing maximum <coughs> price for the construction of the Springdale Fire Station Number 7 and the committee recommended approval. Um, I don't have that amount. Uh, not to exceed? $70,000, wasn't it? <laughs> Let me get there. Not to exceed two million nine hundred and ten thousand six hundred and ninety nine dollars. There you go. The resolution passed. Second. Okay. What about those uh, subcontractor contingencies? Or? Well, I just thought while we were here at the table, we could see if we could get him to come down a little bit. I mean, you know. Any other comments or questions? Denise. Overton? Yes. Fulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jay Cox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Here's 8 0. Hmm. And the next one's an ordinance. Oh, that's 14. That's not me. <laughs> but we'll turn this one over to Ernest, our city attorney. Thank you. Uh, the next item is an ordinance authorizing the city clerk to file a lien for the raising and removal of a structure. Within, his, within the city of Springdale, Arkansas, located at AL4, Virginia, you had previously passed an ordinance authorizing the ra raising and removal of this structure, and this would be to place a lien for our cost uh, for the structure. Move the ordinance pass. Second. We have a motion and a second. Anyone here need to speak to this property, this ordinance? Anyone in the audience? Okay, Denise. Fulfer? Yes. Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Will the emergency clause pass? Second. 
Lawson? Yes, ma'am. Evans? Yes, ma'am. Reed? Yes. Jaycox? Yes. Culver? Yes. Watson? Yes. Overton? Yes. Fulker? Yes. Both the ordinance emergency calls carry 8-0. The last one is an ordinance authorizing the city clerk to file a cleanup lien for the removal of overgrown brush and debris on property located within the city of Springdale, Washington County, Arkansas. There's only one property on this, the other one paid. It is property located at 422 and a half Caudill. Doors do pass. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Anyone need to speak to this in the audience? Okay, Denise. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Jaycox. Yes. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Fulfer. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Ought to be adopted. Second. Reed. Yes. Jaycox. Yes. Culver. Yes. Watson. Yes. Overton. Yes. Fulfer. Yes. Lawson. Yes, ma'am. Evans. Yes, ma'am. Ordinance emergency clause carry 8 0. All right. Item 16. Any comments from department heads? Council members? Mayor, I'd like to, to bring up the uh, bicycle park that was dedicated to the uh, Jones Center that you mm -hmm. were there for and tell the, the public about the uh, deal coming in October about the Red Bull pump. Uh, pump track, pump uh, track uh, world championships. World championship. I think it's going to be huge. Yep. They're talking about 100 uh, cyclists for girls and 100 cyclists for boys. 100,000. 100,000. But, <laughs> but they're talking about a lot of people coming into our city for this Red Bull the big deal. bike trail pump. And Jones Center has done great work on that. And, and oh, 100,000 or 1,000? Well, somewhere. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Fair. No, the way you count people's money, it doesn't. But anybody else, it might. 100,000 or No, 1, I think there are 100,000 that in the preliminaries that lead up to this to the finals and then those those Will this finalists. be the final or this one this of the is finals? The this, this, will be the finals. Is. this will be the world this championship. This is this is going to be tel live televised, live streamed to 7.2 million people around the world. Oh, okay. Then we need to get another food truck out there. Yeah. <laughs> I bet I bet you might find one or two. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments from from uh, council, uh, city attorney? No, sir. Uh, I just have one brief thing. I want to publicly thank my staff. Uh, I am winding up this year as, uh, uh, on Friday. Um, Friday at noon, I will uh, hand over the presidency of the Arkansas Municipal League. It's been, a, it's been a, a, a wonderful year. I appreciate the opportunity, but I, I want to thank the folks uh, in, in, in my office and uh, that have helped, uh, helped me get things done and do the things I'm supposed to do while I was doing that. So, so I, I just they're they've done a great job in helping me. So I appreciate that. Um, you have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.